esters, much like carboxylic acids, have poor leaving groups on the carbonyl carbon. So their reactivity in nucleophilic acyl substitution is limited. The principal nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions of esters are hydrolysis under acidic or basic conditions, transesterification under acidic or basic conditions, and aminolysis. In the hydrolysis reactions, esters are converted to the corresponding carboxylic acids or carboxylates depending on whether acidic or basic conditions are used. In the transesterification reactions, one ester is converted to another. Here, the difference is highlighted by using the generic designations R prime and R double prime for the alkyl groups connected to the carboxyl oxygens. In the aminolysis reaction, an ester is converted to an amide through treatment with an amine. Although this seems like a large number of reactions, and therefore a large number of mechanisms to learn, we'll soon see that acid-catalyzed hydrolysis is just the reverse of Fischer esterification, which was covered in the preceding video on nucleophilic acyl substitution of carboxylic acids. Furthermore, it is nearly identical to acid-catalyzed transesterification as well. Additionally, basic hydrolysis is almost the same as basic transesterification. Let's start to turn our attention to generic mechanisms for each of these processes. As we noted earlier, acid-catalyzed hydrolysis is merely the reverse of Fischer esterification. In acid-catalyzed hydrolysis, an ester is combined with water in the presence of catalytic acid to ultimately yield the carboxylic acid and alcohol fragments. Excess water is used to drive this freely reversible process toward the hydrolysis products. The reaction mechanism begins with the protonation of the carbonyl oxygen of the ester. As with Fischer esterification, the proton source may be written in one of three slightly different ways. It may be seen as a proton, as sulfuric acid, or as the hydronium ion, which is formed from sulfuric acid in water. The carbonyl carbon is then attacked by water, and a tetrahedral intermediate is formed as the carbonyl pi electrons are pushed onto oxygen. The resultant oxonium ion loses a proton, and as it does so, a neutral tetrahedral intermediate is formed. The neutral tetrahedral intermediate can be reprotonated on any one of its three oxygen atoms. However, protonation on either hydroxyl group, while it can and does happen, would merely be a reversal of the previous step, leading to a reversion to reactants. Since we are utilizing excess water to push the equilibrium toward the reaction products, we are interested in a protonation event that would lead to a new intermediate. And that occurs when this neutral tetrahedral intermediate is protonated on the alkoxy group, generating an alcohol as a good leaving group. The alcohol then dissociates from the substrate as the carbonyl pi bond reforms. Finally, the loss of a proton 
yields the carboxylic acid in its neutral form as the final reaction product. Basic hydrolysis of an ester is also called saponification because this reaction plays a role in the making of soap. In this process, hydroxide directly attacks the carbonyl carbon since it is a more powerful nucleophile. As the pi electrons are pushed onto oxygen, a tetrahedral intermediate is formed. This tetrahedral intermediate collapses to displace either hydroxide or the alkoxide. When the alkoxide is displaced, a subsequent acid-base reaction between the carboxylic acid and the basic alkoxide renders the reaction irreversible and drives the equilibrium toward products. As was mentioned earlier, acid-catalyzed transesterification is nearly identical to acid-catalyzed hydrolysis. The only difference is that the nucleophile is a new alcohol rather than water. And this new alcohol can be used in excess to drive the reaction toward a new ester, one that incorporates the R double prime group. Acid-catalyzed transesterification begins with a familiar protonation of the ester on its carbonyl oxygen. With the electrophilicity of the carbonyl thus enhanced, the attack of the new alcohol on the carbonyl carbon pushes pi electrons onto oxygen and forms a tetrahedral intermediate. The loss of a proton from the oxonium ion of this tetrahedral intermediate then neutralizes its charge. This neutral tetrahedral intermediate can be protonated on any of its oxygen atoms. However, when it is protonated on the alkoxy group bearing R prime, the reaction can move forward. Loss of the original alcohol moiety occurs as the carbonyl reforms. And this is followed by the loss of a proton to generate the new ester as our reaction product of interest. As we begin to consider the mechanism for basic transesterification, it will be useful to keep in mind that this reaction is very similar to saponification, which we covered just a few moments ago. In this reaction, the new alkoxide, being a fairly potent nucleophile, directly attacks the carbonyl carbon, pushing the pi bonding electrons onto oxygen and forming a tetrahedral intermediate. This tetrahedral intermediate can collapse so as to displace either of the two comparable leaving groups, the one bearing the R prime group or the one bearing the R double prime group. Therefore, the equilibrium must be driven using an excess of the new alkoxide. When this is done, the ester incorporating the new R double prime alkyl group will be formed as a reaction product. The final nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction of esters is called aminolysis. Aminolysis is the cleavage of an ester using an amine. In fact, ammonia, a primary amine, or a secondary amine could be used. In the example shown here, a primary amine is utilized, and it attacks the carbonyl carbon to form a tetrahedral intermediate as the pi bonding electrons are pushed onto oxygen. The collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate 
may then displace an alkoxide. And when that occurs, the alkoxide readily removes a proton from the nitrogen so as to neutralize its charge. And the neutral amide is formed as the final reaction product. It's worth noting that an alternate version of this mechanism may be drawn. And in the alternate version, the order of the last two steps is merely reversed. In other words, the reaction will still begin with the attack of an amine on the carbonyl carbon of the ester, which pushes pi bonding electrons onto oxygen, forming a tetrahedral intermediate. But in this alternate version, the tetrahedral intermediate can then lose a proton to another amine molecule. At this point, the alkoxide, although not a very good leaving group, is clearly a better leaving group than the nitrogen anion would be. And so, as the tetrahedral intermediate collapses to reform the carbonyl, the alkoxide dissociates and the amide is formed as the reaction product of interest. Although in most instances it is only the amide that is the product of interest, we could be thorough and also note that the displaced alkoxide will then remove a proton from the conjugate acid of the amine that was formed during the second step of this mechanism. This forms an alcohol and a neutral amine molecule. Let's briefly consider some specific examples of the reactions that we've covered in this video. In the following two examples, ethyl propionate is hydrolyzed to yield propionic acid and ethanol. This can be achieved directly through treatment with aqueous acid. Alternatively, aqueous base can be used. However, that would require that we also utilize an acidic workup to protonate the carboxylate that is formed under these conditions. In the two examples shown on this slide, ethyl propionate is transesterified to produce methyl propionate. This can be accomplished with methanol and acetylcatalysis or through treatment with methoxide. In the first instance, ethanol would be liberated as the byproduct. But in the second instance, it is ethoxide that would be the byproduct. In the final example, shown on this slide, aminolysis of ethyl propionate with methylamine yields N-methylpropionamide and ethanol as a byproduct. In summary, esters, much like carboxylic acids, have a fairly poor leaving group bonded to the carbonyl carbon. As a result, their nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions are limited to hydrolysis, transesterification, and aminolysis. Both hydrolysis and transesterification can be conducted under acidic or basic conditions. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.